بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن تبع سنته إلى يوم الدين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Welcome again to another lesson of the benefits and virtues taken from Al-Adab Al-Mufrad Chapter 257 of Brotherhood Anna said that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam formed a pact of brotherhood between Ibn Mas'ud and Zubair and Anas ibn Malik said the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa formed a pact of brotherhood between the Quraysh and the Ansar in my house in Medina. So this shows us of course the importance of brotherhood. The fact that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa would bring two people together and do a pact of brotherhood or bring two tribes or communities together of believers and do pacts of brotherhood. Chapter 258, there is no alliance in Islam. Ahmad bin Shaib reported from his father that his grandfather Abdullah ibn Amr ibn As said, The Prophet ﷺ sat down in the year of the conquest of Mecca on the steps of the Kaaba and praised and glorified Allah. Then he said, Whoever is party to an alliance made in a time of ignorance, Islam only increases its strength, and there is no hijrah after the conquest of Mecca. So this shows us that yes, Islam strengthens the alliances that are in line with its rulings, such as connecting the ties of kinship and supporting the oppressed and others. As for what contradicts it, Islam wipes it out and annuls it. As such, the hadith, there is no alliance in Islam, considered by Imam Muslim in his Sahih, also from Anas ibn Malik, only refers to alliances that are not in line with the rulings of Islam. Likewise, the expression, there is no hijrah after the conquest of Mecca, only means that migrating from Mecca has stopped since then it became the lands of Islam and will forever remain so. Nevertheless, when the Muslim in the lands of the non-Muslims face the trials, and difficulties in practicing and showing their religion as faced by the early Muslims while in Mecca, then they should migrate to them. Thus the Prophet is said in an authentic hadith collected by Imam Abu Dawood and his Sunan, Hijrah will not stop until seeking repentance stops, and seeking repentance will not stop until the sun rises from its place of set. Chapter 259 The one who soaks himself in the rain when the first rain falls. Anas said, Rain fell on us while we were with the Prophet ﷺ. And the Prophet ﷺ took off some of his garments so that the rain could fall on him. We asked, Why did you do that? He said, Because it has newly come from its Lord. So this shows us, as Imam Nawi explained, it forms an evidence for the view of our scholars that is recommended during the first rain to expose other than our aura, parts of our bodies, so the rain touches it. It also proves that when the subordinate sees something from the superior which he does not know, he should ask him so as to know it, act upon it, and teach others too. This hadith also encourages craving for whatever is good and beneficial. It is an evidence for the fact that Allah the Almighty and Sublime is above his creatures. Chapter 260, Sheep are a Blessing. Humayd ibn Malik ibn Khuthayim said, I was sitting with Abu Huraira on some land he owned at Al-Aqiq when some people from Medina came to him on animals and dismounted. Humayd went on saying that Abu Huraira said, Go to my mother and tell her your son sends you greetings of salam and asks you to give us something to eat. Humayd said she put three barley loaves, some olive oil and salt on a platter and put it on my head and carried it to them. When I placed it before them, Abu Huraira said, Allahu Akbar, walillahi walhamdulillah. Allah is greater and praise be to Allah who has given our fill of this bread to us whose only food used to be the black ones, meaning dates and water. The other people before us, i.e. the companions of the Prophet ﷺ, did not get this kind of food. When they left, he said, Nephew, be good to your sheep. Brush the dust and mucus off them. Make their evening pasture good and pray near them. They are among the animals of the garden. By him who holds my soul in his hand, the time has almost come on people when it will be better for someone to have a flock of sheep than to be in the house of Marwan, who was the governor of Medina. So this shows us the chapter heading itself is coined from the authentic hadith collected by Imam Ahmed in his Musnad that the Prophet wasallam said, Rear sheep, for there is blessing in them. However, the narration of Abu and his mother, may Allah forgive them both and shower blessings upon them, shows that keeping sheep includes providing them good feed, drink, cleaning them up, treating them, when they fall ill and so on. It demonstrates also that the companions did not allow the paltry pleasures of this world to distract them from the matters of the hereafter and were very thankful for Allah's favours on them. Ali, may Allah be peace with him, 
said that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "One sheep in the in the house is a blessing, and two sheep are two blessings, and three sheep are all blessings." And chapter two hundred and sixty-one: Camels are a cause of pride to their owners. Abu Harith said, "The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, the height of disbelief lies towards the east." And pride and arrogance lie with those who possess hundreds of horses and camels, the Bedouins. Serenity and humility lies with those who possess sheep. Some of the scholars explain that the expression disbelief lies towards the east, referred to the arrogant and tyrannical rule of the fire worshippers, which was eastern vis-a-vis the city of Medina at the time. Others say it refers to the widespread of disbelief and tribulation at the appearance of the Jal and the yet Juj and Majuj during the end times. Perhaps the humility that follows those who possess sheep results from the fact that they are usually of lower category of plenitude of wealth than the owners of horses and camels. So while that may lead them to be humble, abundant wealth may lead its possessor to be arrogant and, and have pride. Ibn Abbas said, I, have ne- I never cease to wonder at dogs and sheep. Such and such number of sheep are slaughtered in the year and such and such number are sacrificed. One female dog has a litter of such and such number of puppies and still there are more sheep than dogs. So Allah is the creator of the heavens and the earth and all that they contain. He is their controller and sustainer. He increases what he wills, when he wills, and how he wills. Glorious is he, the mighty and sublime. Abu the Biyan said, Umar ibn al-Khattab said to me, Abu the Biyan, how large is your soldier's stipend? I said, 2,500. He said to him, Abu the Biyan, harvest from the fields and increase your livestock before the lads of Quraysh are appointed over you. Among them, the stipend will not be considered to be income. So this narration generally encourages taken to means of attaining nobility and honor since huge harvests and livestock were from the major things of honor amongst the Arabs at the time. And Abin ibn Hazan said, the people of camels and the people of sheep vied with each other for glory. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said, Musa was sent and he was a shepherd. Dawood was sent and he was a shepherd. And I was sent and I used to herd sheep for my people, a jihad in Mecca. So just to recap, This is showing us that it's not always what seems is the best, is the best. So we may all see that to have a lot of wealth and a lot of property, here the examples were given of horses and camels, and maybe in modern times that could be many of the best cars and property, doesn't necessarily mean it's a good thing. And that the Prophet said mentioned over and over again that to have sheep, there is blessings. So this does not mean that we cannot aspire to have wealth, but it also is a warning And it shows us that generally it's more likely those who have camels and horses and own many of them are going to be wealthy people. And as this hadith showed us, this could lead to pride. Whereas a person who has sheep may be more blessing for them because it's less likely for them to become proud. Because most of the time, people who own sheep are not as well off as people who own many horses and camels due to the difference in cost. So it basically brings home to us that we should be careful not to get become proud and haughty over others due to our wealth that we own and until next time inshallah assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa